on the dotted line. Let's fill the gap for your freedom ring and patriotic voices in red, white, and blue. Never give up. You represent America. Hoping and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at a light of my own eyes. Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. I think it's some kind of underwater boat that you're going to attack the Redcoats with. Our infant navy can't beat the British on top of the sea, so I intend to strike from beneath. And the target? Admiral Howe's flagship, the Eagle. Sink her, or we break the blockade. If we fail, Howe's brother lands his army and takes New York. I will not aid in the death of British sailors. <laughs> James, look! Wake up! September 4th, 1776. Dear Mother, James Henri and I find ourselves in New York and the city is under siege. Lord Admiral Howe has arrived with nearly 30,000 troops and the wooden walls of his fleet have sealed off Manhattan Island. No help or supplies can reach the Colonials from the sea. The rebels, licking their wounds from their devastating defeat on Long Island, are down to only 9,000 able men. Last night, a British officer boasted, Admiral Lord Howe's flagship, HMS Eagle, alone could sink what there is of the splinter fleet fur-built rebel navy. Ugh, Henri, when will you learn to close a door when entering a room? But I'd only have to open it again when we leave to meet James. A story? Mom, James wants us to meet him at the fishing wharf as soon as you're ready. Coming? You're going to be thrilled! A sea monster? In New York Harbor? Sir, that is most unlikely. Maybe not thrilled. <laughs> Feisty girl, eh? But hear me, lass. I've fished these waters fair and foul more years than the three you've been alive, and never seen the likes of this. Last midnight, it was a mile north of the Whitehall Battery and less than a cable length away from my boat. Round it was, bright like a candle. I tried to give chase, but down it goes, a light under the water. And then, gone? Like a ghost at dawn. Hmm. I'd like to rent your skiff tonight. You're not thinking of stalking this seagoing phantom. Oh, James, it isn't real. Are you sure? Because I think I know what its next meal is. There's the Whitehall Battery. We row a mile north. See anything? Yes. Trouble if we run into a patrol. Oh, the monster. Henri, no one believes in monsters. I remind you, this is the 18th century. Oh, but I have heard stories about, about giant beasts that eat whole ships in one bite. That's more than I can swallow. I think she made a joke. And the joke is what we are. Out here in the middle of... of... Look! It's the monster! Hey! What are you doing? Let's get after it! After it? Oh, we should be getting away from it!
Master Henri, the nature's become a coppersmith. What is it? I'll tell you later. The pump was sticking again. I couldn't surface fast enough. If you must, release the bomb. You'll pop right up and... What did you see? Nothing. Nothing at all. They were watching from the woods. I repeat, what did you see? We saw... that. And that is? I, I think it's some kind of underwater boat that you're going to attack the Redcoats with. If that were so, such an enterprise would require secrecy, which begs the question of what to do with you three spies. We are not spies. We're journalists. For Benjamin Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette. My word. No, my words. I wrote that. And I wrote the grammatically correct article below it. Benjamin Franklin helped convince General Washington that my turtle was an idea worth trying. I'm in his debt. You three may stay, but only if you give your word you'll withhold the story until after the attack. We agree. <gasps> now, Mr... Bushnell. David Bushnell, late of Saybrook, Connecticut. James Hiller, Sarah Phillips, and Henri Lefevre. Now, about this attack. Our infant navy can't beat the British on top of the sea, so I intend to strike from beneath. And the target? You won't be disappointed. Admiral Howe's flagship, the Eagle, 64 guns, the most powerful ship this side of the Atlantic. Sink her, and we break the blockade. Keep a lookout for the patrols. There's even more ships since last night. I count 300 hulls. Make for the battery. Something up ahead. Halt, by order of the Crown. They've got us. Remember, men, say nothing. They can't find out. What is that? I call it a rotating oar. It moves the vessel forward. And this one helps it go under. Mr. Bushnell, you have created what men have dreamt of. An underwater craft that is practical and safe. My little turtle is all that and more. You see, once under the eagle, Sergeant Lee will drill a small hole in the hull and attach this underwater bomb. But bombs can't explode underwater. This one can, and when it does, it will send a message to the HMS Eagle that we are a force to be reckoned with. But the soldiers will have no warning. Yes, we are living in strange times. But we are at war, Miss Phillips, and soldiers understand war. There's also pumps, ballast weights, rudder. No end of things to turn, pump, screw, and unscrew. I know there's a lot to learn, Sergeant. I wish we had more time for training. There's another problem, I fear. The Redcoats captured the towboat. They took the crew. I don't think they'll talk, at least not right away. The... It's all right, General Putnam. They work for Benjamin Franklin. Ah, uh, yes, I've met the boy. A fine show at Bunker Hill in Boston, eh, lad? Yes, sir. This does leave us with a problem. It does indeed, General Putnam. Even if the men don't talk, Hal will know that some plan is afoot. We must strike soon. When can you attack? We need a calm sea and a weak ebb tide, say, the night after next. But we'll need another boat to tow the turtle into range. Maybe I can help. Let us do it. Three youths in the middle of that armada. It's dangerous. We've been in dangerous spots before, sir. We know how to avoid trouble. Three youths, one of them a girl? They would be ignored as harmless. Besides, I'd only be towing, not actually attacking. And if we're going to report this story, we have to be on the water. What do you have in mind, son? What happened? Sarah, could you please make a sketch of the turtle for the paper? Ah, uh, I suppose so. Huh? Listen, we can't let Sarah know this. She'd object. We're supposed to be journalists, not soldiers. We're not supposed to be part of the action. You do not trust her? Sure I trust her, but she is British. I think we should tell her. Look, we'll fill her in later. 
right now. Just tell her we're... Observing the British fleet? But why at night? We're letting them get used to us, so they'll ignore us when the turtle goes on its mission. Here! What is going on with you two? Wait! There! <gasps> They've seen us! What should we do? Fish! Hey, Sue! I'm coming aboard! What are you doing out here? We are planning to attack and stick you with fish hooks. Hmm. What's this then? They are notes for writing my mother and my adventures in the colonies. Your mother takes a keen interest in military affairs. There's nothing seditious about an intelligent woman wanting to keep well informed. That's for Black Dick to decide. Bosun, pass a tow line. Black Dick? That's what the sailors call Admiral Howe. Give us Black Dick and we fear nothing. But why do they call him Black Dick? Perhaps he has a dark temperament. We're going to find out. They're taking us aboard the Eagle. Compliments. You're to escort the prisoners to his day cabin. Very good, sir. This way. <gasps> oh. What's the matter, my lady? Don't like a bit of mold with your bread? <laughs> 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 As you can see, we plan to control the Hudson River Valley by holding Montreal on the north and New York to the south, cleaving the colonies in two, divide and conquer. A sound strategy, if this were Europe and all pleasant fields and farms, but it's nothing but dense, hostile wilderness. Nature will fight us as defiantly as the colonials. As a colleague observed, you cannot conquer a map. We must first negotiate. Negotiate? With these ignorant rebels? Hmm. I see you've never met Benjamin Franklin. He may be many things, including a rebel, but his worst enemy would not dare call him ignorant. Don't underestimate the Americans, Captain. They're carving a nation out of wilderness. They claim they were night fishing, sir, but I found this. She said their notes for writing her mother. I trust there's a good explanation for plying restricted waters in the middle of the night. Like we said, we were night fishing, sir. Indeed. Well, you've hooked some trouble, young man. Admiral Howe, we're journalists, and we're writing about your fleet. We work for Benjamin Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette. Benjamin Franklin? Mother sent me to stay with him while she remained in London. Dr. Franklin very kindly taught us to be journalists. And how is my dear friend, Dr. Franklin? Is there anyone the boss doesn't know? He is very well, thank you. Sir, the rebels are planning something. Franklin or not, I don't trust them. My captain is a cautious man, and with excellent reason. I assure you, we are only observing. Just fishing for facts. Young lady, I want your word as a loyal subject of the Crown that you're taking no action against us. You have it. It's the truth. Uh. I suppose it is prudent to make friends with the press, sir. Indeed, Captain. Oh, I did not think we would ever get off that ship and complete our mission. Our mission, Henri? You mean gathering facts. What else? You mean, what else aren't you and James telling me? You two have been acting odd all night. What is going on? We're going to tow the turtle and be part of the attack. What? I wanted to tell you right away. Thanks, Henri. I guess you're upset? No, I'm not upset. I'm livid. I gave my word to Admiral Howe. 
You have made me a liar. I've never lied in my life. Never? How could you betray me like this? Sarah, it's not what you think. What am I supposed to think? That you've forsaken your duty as a journalist for personal glory? I knew you wouldn't understand. You understand. I will not aid in the death of British sailors. But we're only towing them. And that makes it right? How horrible. I'm ashamed of you. I'll have nothing to do with this. Am I your prisoner, Mr. Bushnell? Of course not, but I must insist on your being my... Guest? Only until after the attack. Please, Sarah. Maybe if you promise not to tell You've any... You've already made a liar out of me once, Mr. Hiller. That is enough for one night. Ugh. in two hours. Time to go. Give me a minute. We're going now. I just wanted to say goodbye. Can't tell what might happen out there. You know? You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. It's wrong. I'm sorry you feel that way. I've got to go. Guess I won't need this tonight. Not unless you want a beacon to alert the British. It'll be dark, but the Foxfire Moss inside will provide light enough to read the depth gauge. Looks like you'll get your story firsthand tonight. Best of luck for all of us. bats on the water for this hour. I wonder if they know what's happening. We're here! Still wish I had more training. You'll do fine. I'm sure. A patrol! Hurry! And good luck! The time passes slowly, doesn't it? It does indeed, Miss Phillips. Nearly done, sir. By heaven, I know where I'd rather be. Why aren't you? Why hastily train someone else to lead the attack? The turtle calls for limbs stouter than mine. I lack the strength and endurance. My dear brother trained for months. He can make her thread a needle if he had to. What happened? He so wants to strike a blow for liberty, but he's down with a fever that ravages our troops. I'm sure Sergeant Lee will do his best. A little bit up. That's it. Steady now, steady. Come on, stop! <sighs> Pushed off! Current strong! Must fight it! Lee's air supply is going to run out. Where is he? The bomb should have exploded by now. Something's wrong. Please get out of the boat. You said that something was wrong. I want to help my friends, but I can't do it alone. Air! Giving out! There! There he is!
Bushnell? They're going to be captured. Shoot at the bomb. Blow it up. That'll send them running and loosen that dreaded blockade. Signal the fleet. Cut anchors and drift with the tide. But that will loosen our blockade, sir! Until we know what and how many we're up against, I won't risk the fleet. Recall the longboats! They're cutting their anchors! And their longboat is turning away! Your friends are safe, Miss Phillips. I just wanted to thank you for what you did out there, and also to say I'm sorry. I should have told you the truth. I was wrong not to. Yes, you were. And it hurt. I just didn't know which side you were really loyal to. Whichever one it may be. Nothing would change my loyalty to my friends. Thanks to you two, my turtle will live to fight another day. I'm afraid it'll be without us, sir. A wise lady has reminded me that good journalists record events. They don't make events. September 7th, 1776. Dear Mother, Admiral Howe has moved his fleet to a more distant anchorage. I must admit, my admiration of these ingenious colonials. There is something about this new world that inspires new thoughts. Perhaps its untamed vastness fills the heart with dreams of endless possibilities. The more I am here, the more I believe in the future of this infant nation. Let's go!